Jean-Luc, why are you doing the Golden Globe race? I am doing the Golden Globe race because uh, I was dreaming about this race. I was 23 years old uh, in uh, 68 when they start. I knew uh, one man, uh, Loïc Fougeron, who was from Lorient, and I follow him. I try to follow him because we have not so much uh, position at that time. And uh, uh, they speak a lot in France about uh, Bernard Moitessier, about Loïc, and uh, uh, when uh, Bernard Moitessier decide to continue to Pacific, uh, he was uh, in the first page of uh, Paris Match, and uh, there was a lot, a lot of uh, media speaking about the race. And I was dreaming about that, so when Don McIntyre invented this 50 years uh, story, uh, I decided to enter into the race. What was your inspiration into sailing and when did it begin? My inspiration into sailing was the books that I read when I was young. Uh, I dream with those books and uh, I start sailing very very early. I first sail with a little boat, uh, little boat who has uh, some centimeters and uh, as I grew up uh, the boat were bigger and bigger and uh, I go to the sailing school called Glenon which was very famous in France and uh, after that I start to sail Cruising or racing? For me it is two different things. I like racing and I like cruising. In a few words, how would you describe the best and worst aspects to your character? I think one, one of the best aspects is that I like to share the things that I love. Uh, it was like that that I decided to be teacher of mathematics. And, uh, and I am also a volunteer, as soon as I decide to do something, uh, I try to realize and to take all the things to arrive to the goal that I have fixed. Uh, but to do that, uh, you, are you are obliged to be a little bit uh, selfish, you are obliged to be uh, to avoid all the things who disturb your goal and uh, sometimes it can be difficult for the people around to accept uh, this uh, kind of uh, selfish but uh, I am like that. Can you tell us your favorite book, song and movie? My favorite book is uh, the, the Les Navigateurs Solitaires, Single and Dead Sailor. Uh, it is uh, one of the first books that I read about sailing and uh, I have a very, very good memory about this book. Uh, my favorite song, I, I love Pink Floyd, I love everything which is rock, I love uh, uh, David Gilmour, uh, I love uh, I am eclectic about the songs, but uh, I, I can uh, I can listen a lot of different songs. I like music, and I pl I was a singer in a group, so I like music. And uh, about movies, I don't go often uh, to see movies, uh, and I have nothing. Uh, uh, particular about that, uh, I was fan of uh, I was fan of uh, Pirole Fou, for example, when I was young. <laughs> but uh, there is nothing to see with selling. <laughs> what was your most memorable selling experience in life so far? My. <laughs> My best experience is my last time around the world. I was going against the wind, same things as the Vendée Globe, but in the other way, uh, beating against the wind. 
and uh, when you arrive in uh, Cap de Bonne Espérance, Good Hope Cap, uh, it's good <laughs> when you have finished the four Roaring Forties and uh, and uh, <coughs> arriving uh, after four try, I miss three times uh, this record. Uh, arriving after uh, four try and uh, arriving to beat the record, it was for me a big success. Perhaps better than uh, the first arriving of the Vendée Globe, which is in my memory also. <laughs> Why do you think you can survive this grueling adventure and what will be the toughest part for you? Um, the toughest part is, the, my main problem is I don't know this kind of boat. I don't remember this kind of boat. I have been five times around the world. Each time I arrive, each time I finish, when I was in racing, when I was racing, I arrive on the podium. I was second or third. Uh, I arrived to beat the record, but this time it is not a racing boat. It is a kind of boat, very heavy. Uh, it's a boat uh, which coming from the 60s. So I had a boat at that time but uh, I forgot this kind of boats and I have to learn again uh, to work with this boat. So uh, I'm sure I can survive this adventure but uh, I am not sure to arrive and my first goal is to start, the second goal is to arrive and after that we see if I arrive on the podium or not. Have you ever experienced real fear and when was that? The fear is when you don't know how to handle things that arrive. For example, uh, you have a thunderstorm. Uh, you don't know where the light is arriving. Uh, you are afraid that the light arrives on the mast. Uh, you are afraid uh, of that. Uh, when you are among the icebergs also. In the first Vendée Globe I was uh, in the middle of plenty of icebergs. Uh, you are obliged uh, after uh, 48 hours uh, watching, uh, you are obliged to go a little bit to sleep. So uh, you go to sleep but uh, you are quite anxious when you go to sleep. So I don't know, I don't like when I am not able to manage things. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to by entering the race? By entering the race for me it is enter in a race which is a legend and uh, I like to to revive uh, what they have done in 68 with Bernard Matossier, with uh, Robin Nod Johnson and all those people who start with this kind of boats. Um, the sea is uh, quite the same, the weather is quite the same and I will be happy to see how they arrive to manage all that. It is completely different of the Vendée Globe or of the BOC. It, for me it is another kind of adventure it is to revive a new adventure and uh, I like new things <laughs> what will you miss most during your time at sea what I miss most uh, my children my grandchildren my uh, wife my uh, uh, the food, uh, well, but uh, when you decide to do something you are obliged to enter into do uh, what you want. So eight months is not so much and uh, <laughs> uh, I will have plenty of, uh, of happiness also. So I think more about uh, what I what I have than what I miss. <laughs> Do you think this whole experience will change you in any way or has it already? Uh, yes, this kind of experience when you go around the world 
when you come back you are not the same than when you leave the harbor uh, when you go around the world you are alone on your boat you have plenty of time to think about your life about the, everything about the earth about uh, plenty of things and uh, for example when I come back after my first uh, turn around the world um, I accept uh, to be more fatalist for example than before things are not have not the same importance and uh, I think everybody will be changed at the end of the race why did you choose the yacht you have and what is it when I heard about this race, I uh, check all the boats who have long keel and uh, rudder behind the keel and so on. And uh, I chose, I look all these boats and uh, I chose a boat who was not so old. I didn't want a boat who was built in the 60s. Uh, the Rustler 36 that I chose uh, it was built in 90 uh, so he has only 27 years old he's only 27 years old so it is not so old it is a uh, polyester which is not so old and uh, I thought it is one of the best boat but uh, there is also boat uh, that I look uh, the Gaia for example or the Lelo for me they are also very good boats and uh, I'm not sure this one is the best I chose this one and I am going to start with this one how are you changing the boat to make it safer or faster well, First, to be safer, I change quite everything on the boat about the rigging. I change the mast, I change uh, all the rigging, I change the sails, I change the engine, I change a lot of things. To be also safer, I had, uh, I have three watertight bulkhead because uh, uh, this kind of boat, it is very important, the watertight bulkhead for me. And, uh, also, I try to be as fast as possible because it is a race. So I have good sales. Uh, I have a good preparation. I buy this boat uh, two years ago, so now I start to know her quite well. And uh, after that, we will see. Uh, it's a long trip, a long way, and. Uh, I think that we are going to be good friends when we arrive. <laughs> a sextant and chronometer often have a story behind them. Do you have yours yet? And uh, anything special about them? Uh, yes, the sextant is uh, special because uh, it was offered by an Englishman, an English family, who hoped to go uh, to Australia with their boats 30 years ago and uh, or 40 perhaps <laughs> and um, they, they find that they were not sellers and they stop in France and I help them to sell the boat and with the price of the boat they take the plane to go to Australia and the man uh, to because I save him a lot about uh, several things with the custom and with plenty of things uh, at the end he offered me this section so for me this section he has a story and uh, about the chronometer it's a new one because it's an automatic one it is uh, from Breitling it's a friend who own a shop in uh, Nantes uh, and uh, he find me the best one for this trip. And I have two of them. I have two sextant and two chronometer like that because uh, uh, the, the sextant and the chronometer are very important in the race. When was the last time you actually cried and can you share this with us maybe? Yes, there is there is two things uh, who are able to make me cry. 
this is uh, it is the songs and it is the uh, movies and uh, I don't remember last time but last time it can be the last movies that I have seen in the, in the cinema here and um, and the song uh, uh, if you hear uh, Beethoven uh, Appassionata or things like that or uh, Saphony au clair de lune uh, you it's a lot of emotion for me and uh, when there is too much emotion uh, sometimes I cry even if I try to hide it. <laughs> Describe your impression of the Southern Ocean uh, in a few words and um, how would you think you will feel after rounding Cape Horn? Southern Ocean is for me impossible to describe that. You have to go there to know what it is. Uh, I've been there several times. Uh, even in French <laughs> it is very hard to describe because uh, it is a pure nature and uh, you are alone in the middle of nowhere and uh, there is plenty of birds it's very hard to describe the Southern Ocean and uh, for me the Cap Horn is a very good friend because I have been uh, 10 times, no 11 times because I have been once cruising and uh, I spent the 1st of January uh, 2014 with uh, Lighthouse Keeper and his family. Uh, I spent some time with him, with them, and it is uh, it was fantastic. And uh, so for me, uh, it will be the. <laughs> I have been there several times, <laughs> and each time it is different. Each time I, you can pass the Cap Horn with a very strong wind, or with no wind, or with contrary wind, or with there, there is. It is different each time, but each time you are very happy to be there and to arrive in Atlantic Ocean when you go in th that way. <laughs> Who will be at the finish line to meet you? Uh, the finish line to meet me, first I hope that will be my wife. <laughs> uh, because I live during eight months and uh, I hope uh, also uh, that plenty of friends will be there uh, my children, my grandchildren uh, if they can be there with their works uh, and uh, plenty of friends uh, um, I, to, I, I make a big party when I arrive and uh, I hope my goal is to arrive and uh, this is my main goal to arrive, just to arrive. Thank you.